Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show Mindful Matters on Radio Al Ansar 90.4 FM in Durban and 105.6 FM in Peter Maritzburg. A show that promises to provide an hour of inspiration, information and motivation with me your host Nazia Adam Osman. This is a pre-recorded show so no calls or WhatsApp messages will be taken. Since 1954, FAMSA has been providing counseling, education and training for South Africans who want help with relationship issues. Through its countrywide network of societies, FAMSA can reach people throughout the nation. FAMSA offers a comprehensive range of services to families, communities and companies. And so, no guessing, the topic for today is family counseling and to discuss that, we have our sister who runs FAMSA, Sister Menas. Welcome. Shukran. Um so please tell us a little bit about yourself, the work that you do, um and you know what's been going on with FAMSA if you're comfortable. Yes, thank you. On a professional note, I'm a social worker by profession and I have a master's in social work, mm-hmm. medical masters, and I'm recently appointed as director at FAMSA Durban since February this year. And FAMSA is a registered non-profit organization providing services to individuals and families. in conflict and experiencing communication difficulties or breakdown in relationships. Okay. So when we talk about FAMSA stands for Family South Africa, right? That's right, Nazi. Right. It stands for Family South Africa and so, we throughout the country. And you know, I mean I think about family. Is it is it actually just family because relationships can mean relationship with neighbors, relationships mm-hmm. with coworkers? Is it just family in terms of maybe kids or parents and couples or do you go more than that? Over time we had to evolve and change in terms of our perspective but when it was initially mm. begun it began purely for families that were having difficulties in marital relationships right. since 1954 it has seen a change process and therefore it includes all individuals in relationships okay so i'm just going to throw a few at you because i'm just thinking about um sometimes the you know the call that i would get and i would yes. as- and look if if fams would cover it so just say there's family members um who are suffering with someone who got a drug problem that the they the drug person is getting I mean, the drug addict is getting take, you know cared for but the family is struggling or would do you cover things like that yes that would be family and marital that will be family therapy because okay. it's affecting a family unit usually when it's a drug related matter you have a specialized service and that family is supposed to be in supportive counseling okay with through, the rehab with, yes with that rehab program right. but should it not be available famsa would willingly engage that family in family counseling and support and services okay. we would not turn you away no family would be turned away right if requesting for services nobody is ever turned away wait because i mean I, that's one of the huge ones i see where there's a lot of i mean that person's getting the help they need but the family itself is struggling yeah. on how to yeah. you know there's almost ruptured trust has been broken absolutely it's a it's a very common and rising right. problem in our community mm. and it is tearing families apart and it is dividing families and mm. it does have very negative impact on families mm. and it is sad that if they're not getting counseling with the rehab center we would definitely be able to provide it that for them and you know you said that you were a social worker that's and right yeah so i mean i know but just for the sake of our listeners what do social workers do when do you come to a social worker when is it time to ask you guys okay. for help a social worker is a individual that has been trained at university with a four year degree it's quite an intensive program of training and the focus is on managing individuals with problems mm-hmm. and challenges that they face in their lifetime or life space. Mm-hmm. And in terms of your training, your training focuses on three core aspects for social work, which mm-hmm. is individual counseling, that's we call case work. Right. And then we do group work, which is a method of doing activities in a group context, mm-hmm. and community work is engaging communities in dialogues and community activities to mm-hmm. strengthen communities. in their functioning and challenges of social issues. Okay. Okay. So it you have to be trained as a social worker and it's a four year degree and it's offered at many universities throughout the country. And I'm a social worker with about 30 years. It's my 30th year of social work experience. Wow. Yes, it's a 30th year and it's quite wide and varied in mm-hmm. terms of from children from the children sector to physically challenged to correctional services mm. and um children with learning challenges and difficulties and now with family and marital therapy as well yes i know like uh, you know the way i make sense of you know, for some for some of my patients to differentiate what a social worker does to what a psychologist does as they look if it's in the environment and 
um, the context is, uh, let's just say, toxic, or that's what's concerning you, that sounds more social, yes. where we yeah. stimulate you to, you know, to enc- encourage you to, you know, mm-hmm. get that kind of support. Absolutely. And if it's more where it's now you're taking it in and it's affecting your mindset, mm-hmm. then it becomes psychology. I don't know if I've got that right. What do you think? Is that it's, It is the somebody? emphasis on relationships mm-hmm. and managing your relationships. And if they're conflict-ridden of how to find solutions in terms of the way forward and be a better family, be a better individual, be a better parent, or even a young person, be a better teenager. Mm. It's The focus is on you in terms of your relationships with others, mm. whoever's in your circle. That's beautiful because I know I read a meme recently which was talking about, you know, um, trauma can happen through relationships, but so must healing. So it sounds Absolutely. like you guys do that. Yes, yeah. yes. yeah. Healing through relationships. That's beautiful. Yeah. And you find that in individual counseling, the impact is quite intense because it has to be in terms of focusing on what's the individual's need. It's very individual driven. Right. And the emphasis is on improving your relations as an individual. Right. And that healing process is wonderful when you see it in the context of treatment and therapy and engagement. That I mean, I'm I'm sure it must be quite challenging as well because I think an individual in the room it's 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 taxing, but it's doable where you focus on them yeah. and you focus on their challenges. But you've got three people in the room, and they're all priority now, right? Absolutely. How do you manage that? How do you manage to draw the balance between each individual's needs and goals? Well, we're looking. We've shifted FAMSA services a bit this year since I've taken over. And I said, if you identify in a family that there's a need for individual counselling first, right? We would opt for that before we proceed to family therapy. Okay, so you, so you start yes. with one. Yes, we that we call the symptom one. of the system. As Absolutely, such. right. Okay, and there are the other players as well. But the emphasis is on beginning with that individual, understanding that individual. Mm -hmm. Because if that individual has not resolved their conflict, they cannot enter into family therapy. Mm. Oh, so one can actually affect the dynamics. Yes, there's other ways of dynamics of looking at the situation and in terms of therapeutic counseling and support in that. But I think people are like, okay, we, we overlook this a lot. We look at the one person that we call the symptom. And then there's also, what do you call them, the enablers Absolutely. or the codependents that yeah. allow the behavior. Yeah. So do you work with stuff like that as well? Yes, absolutely. That will be addressed in family therapy, whereas we begin with the individual and then we would extend it. Because mm-hmm. your network could just be a partner who you are in relations with. It could be a co-worker. Mm. It's quite wide and varied. Mm. It's so a dyad. It's happening. It's absolutely. working in that system, right? That's right. Absolutely. Um, so, you know... I hear FAMSA has been around since 1954. That's right. What was the vision behind it? What was the thought? FAMSA began, with all due respect, and in terms of the history of our country, it was primarily for white families. Okay. And its beginnings was transferred from Dr. Mace, who was in London and thought that in South Africa, they, it was a time in South Africa where white families were greatly under strain and needed support in terms of marital therapy. And it slowly got extended to the other racial groups. And as time has worn on, and we all know the challenges in terms of at a personal level, work level, in terms of the strains of society, Mm. the program had to transform and be more aligned to the current needs of South Africa. And we know we have the social issues of poverty, HIV, Mm. teen parenting, children in conflict with the law, it's wider now. And obviously families and individuals are affected. Mm. And in that process, FAMSA has transformed its services to look at what the current trends are and providing services in terms of current needs of individuals, families and communities. That's brilliant because I think we have to be, you know, flexible and versatile in changing with the time. Absolutely. Because they say there's two things guaranteed, there's death and change. Yes. And, you know, <clears throat> we're talking about family and the concept of family differs um, in terms of races, culture, community. Yes, it does. Um, but I, I don't know if this, if I'm generalizing, but I feel there's a trend where families have now become very nuclear. As before, um, it was quite extended. wide, it extended. Lots yeah. of people lived in one home. Yeah. Yes, it had its, its drama and its politics, but it also had support. Yes. And that's where you see the increase in breakdown in families, mm. particularly if there's an absence of, abs, excuse me, absence of additional support, extended family units or mm. family support or your neighbor or somebody else you can count on. That's because right. I think the fact that more, more of us work today, 
Mm. And balancing work and home can be very, very challenging, mm. male and female. Of course, yeah. And in terms of the rise in, and now we in the period of 16 days of activism, yeah. which is quite critical, we see the rise in domestic violence and conflicts. Suddenly there's a surge of conflicts in families and relations. Mm. And, and so much of harm can also be done in these systems. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you look at domestic violence, it's crazy the rates mm. that we have in South Africa. Yeah, it is. The, our, our rates are too high and we need to go back to the drawing board. And we all need each other. Mm. And we need to create that balance. And we, we also find that elders need more recognition in families. Mm. And we, we want to drive this program for the new year about the role of elders and valuing elders and yeah. family value systems. Because if you ask a young person, what is your family value system? You'll get a, uh, mm, I'm not quite sure. But I mean, it's scary. We value our children a lot. But you're right. We don't value the elders anymore. That's right. And I know, you know, I at one point I used to go to clinics and we were doing this domestic violence talks. And lots of the nurses said, you know what, that, that's relevant, but can you talk about the elders that are being abused? Because children were taking over their houses, kicking them out, um, not giving them access to their own medication. I don't know whether they wanted mm. a slow death or whatever it was. It's just the lack very, of respect. Really sad. There's an absence of respect and values mm. we're finding increasingly. And we want to drive a program where it talks to those elements mm. and also spiritual and religious beliefs. South yeah. Africa is a beautiful country where we're all allowed to practice our faith without any restrictions. Yeah. And um, we also want to be fashionable like the West and say to our young people that doesn't count anymore. And I think also in terms of our cultural practices, uh, it's been discounted by young people. Mm. And the elders have a lot to offer. But because young people don't understand the value of it, mm. we've discounted it. Almost and it's not identifying with yes. our roots. Yeah. yeah. So we intend running, we intend driving that program in the new financial year so mm. that there is a more sense of togetherness and partnership with all. Because mm. everybody has a role to play, young and old, together. Of course. And I think there should be moderation or balance in everything in that, you know, certain things didn't work back in the day, but now we have the balance of Absolutely. both. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't have to be so patriarchal, but it doesn't yes. mean you must discard. No, that's it. Not to discard. Mm. Yeah. To see the yeah. value of. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, it's through the many shows that I've had, one of the stuff that's come up is, you know, we, do post, we did postnatal depression a while ago, and it was an increase in the fathers. And one of the reasons cited was possibly fathers have to play a bigger role because Absolutely. the support systems are falling off. Also increase postnatal depression in mothers because they also not getting... You know, before there was this time period where you were taken care of. Or That's right. It took a village to raise a child. Absolutely. And now it is not, you know, not anymore. In terms of fathers, uh, we run a program, a fatherhood program, right. to encourage fathers to be more involved, to understand their role and responsibilities. Right. And we do parenting program. Oh, great. We do parenting programs for parents with challenging teens mm. and we do as you know in KZN unfortunately besides our high HIV stats we have an increase in the number of teen parents mm. so we have very young parents who are and, and um, you're saying parents but I mean I think it ends up being the mother because there was a show uh, or there's some research done where I think 40% of the fathers are not involved in their child's life and the, the article was called Where Are the Fathers? It's very challenging and you have young, a young parent mm. and needs the support of the extended family. Yeah. And we're finding those programs very, very effective. As much as we believe that it is our responsibility to make sure that we don't want to encourage teen parents, but it's there. Mm. We can't it's turn an a our blind problem. eye. Yeah. We cannot turn, turn a blind, blind eye, eye to it. And many young children are being affected yeah. and it's going to affect the long term of the country yeah. because those are going to be the young adults that will be in our elder stage mm. and the impact of it in terms of the country. Mm. So we are driving those programs as oh, well. Yeah. And I think that's a good point to bring religion in where our religion says, you know, um, only have sex within marriage or be faithful to one partner and it's encouraged and those things could, I mean, we can see prevent so many societal ailments yeah. that to some degree we've been sheltered from. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. There's a great amount of prevention work done in terms of uh, young people, 
but we continue, we've got to ask ourselves why with all the prevention work that we're doing, that mm. we're still presenting with all these social ills. Ills, yeah. What is the cause of it? And when we looked at it as a team, we realized that it comes back to your family values, mm. your spiritual values. Yeah. And I think connection between parent and child, because scarily enough, okay, we're all busy in our lives. Uh, how, how much of time do we spend with our children? Are we talking about the issues that need to be yeah. spoken about? Because if they're not getting that information from you and you're too shy to talk about it, where are they getting it from Absolutely. and what messages are they getting? And are we overcome with providing a material world and mm. not a value family system? Yeah, because I think we want to yeah. provide them with all that we didn't have, but Absolutely. we're not providing them with what yeah. we did have. That's right. Yeah. And those values that we were raised with, mm. those systems that we were raised with, has impacted positively on many young people. Mm. But we need to go back to the drawing table and look at what did we do that was different back then yeah. and what would work now. Because, I mean, even to connect socially, to speak, <gasps> I think you need yeah. some training for some of the children. They don't oh. know how to be social. Like, there's a whole lot of social awkwardness. Absolutely. We're almost raising an Asperger's society, like generation. Right. And we're having... Young mothers who are consumed with social media, so are totally mm. disconnected from their children. That's another whole topic, I think, on another day, mm. I was here, which would be good to know, is focusing on the impact of social, social media. media. Well, you know, I always reflect on this every single show that I have. Social media comes up. It affects everything, whether it's depression, anxiety, um, body image. Absolutely. Everything is affected by social media and the so-called influences and who our children choose to be yeah. their influences. Absolutely. And the impact of it on families as well and marriages. Yeah, that's, you know, I think back in the day, if your spouse went out, you were afraid. Yeah. And now you don't know what's happening within the space, what the person could be doing next to you and what is loyal and what is disloyal now. It's become very, very grey. Yeah. Very, yeah. very. It's very, very, very challenging in the current tide. But uh, I think if we just uh, keep on emphasizing what's your family values, your spiritual values, mm. that brings you back on track. It's mm. a good reminder of how to be functioning within the system. Yeah. Whether you're in a family system, whether you are a single parent, whatever your mm. role is. Whatever your mm. definition of family is. Yes, it's because in South mm. Africa, it's very broad and wide, yeah. really. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I hear you saying that FAMSA covers relationships, not just marital counseling. It's moved away from that That's right. dynamic. We made, we made that shift. And I'm wondering whether, you know, if you could just share a little bit with us, what are the majority of the cases that you are seeing at present in terms of um, couples or, you know, what's walking through that door? There's a rise in marital conflicts. Right. And I, we're finding uh, that the rise in marital conflicts is probably influenced by many factors mm -hmm. okay and people it's about people's inability to communicate and resolve conflicts amicably that's that's ironical eh? that communication is an issue in it yeah. when you're faced with a an incident the inability to sit down as a family and talk it through or mm. sit down as a couple or sit down as individuals and look at this is the problem mm. what is the solution right we, we blame, we point fingers, we get angry with each other. It escalates, it breaks down, mm. but we don't talk. We yeah. don't talk it through. But I, th I think blaming is the easiest thing to do yeah. because it, it takes away responsibility. It's very comfortable. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's comfortable, but it to... has consequences to it because mm. years down the line, it would impact on the individual. It right. does impact on the individual, bringing about anger and resentment. Mm. And it brings out a whole list of negative connotations with it. Yeah. But the core is it's in our inability to talk our issues through. Mm. Yeah. And, and no matter whether it's a parent and a child, whether it's a couple, whether it's with your mother-in-law mm. or whether it's with your co-worker, it's just our inability to talk through respectfully. Right. And, you know, I know we were chatting about this. I'm just going to bring it up. What about neighbors? I know back in the day when community, we had to live in the flats, the neighbors yeah. fighting with each other was a very common one. Yeah. Do you still see neighbors squabbling? Any? No, no. no one bothers to that point. They just ignore each other. Sadly <laughs> so, Nazia. The breakdown within our communities, and I said to you one of our programs is community dialoguing. Mm. In certain areas, there's an 
absence of community spirit because mm. I mind my own business. I don't want to be bothered with you. Mm. Don't bother and even me. Even if I see something, I'm not going to tell you Absolutely. because you're probably going to you're going to bite yeah. my head off. I'm <laughs> often accused of being a nosy neighbor because mm. if I hear a kid, I would check well, up. my work is mm. I would want to check it out mm. and do something about it. But we've we've been we now live very independently of each other. Mm. and we don't want to be bothered with each other sadly so mm. so we raise our children just to go in our house sit down if you end up in your room or you end up on social media for the evening that's, that's okay so be it yeah. so be it and that's that is not how communities can sustain themselves mm. it will create a breakdown in communities and then it's influenced by our cultural beliefs and some religious beliefs about who i can interact with who i can't and the, the rules of interaction with each mm. other so we creating can, barriers almost yeah, but mm-hmm. we just need to be mindful that as we living together mm. and neighbors with great due respect prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very good to his neighbors mm. encourage neighborliness right So we need to look at where that goes back to our values. Yeah. It's all back to I keep on saying to my team, it goes back to your value system. Mm-hmm. And that's why when I say to young people, what is your value system? They actually got to think about it. Mm-hmm. Because we don't talk about that anymore around yeah. families don't eat together. Mm-hmm. Families don't pray together. And we're so quick to judge because I think each one of us has our own value. I'm I, I personally value time. I like yeah. to, and some people value something else and that's right. we judge each other so much, but yet we have a right to have our own values. Absolutely. And what works for your family unit? Mm, as long as it works for you, yes. others have no right. And it's within that. your realm of your value system, your spiritual beliefs mm. in terms of your domain, what works for you as long as it's not harmful mm. and causing um compromise functioning for anybody in the family mm. but you got to figure out what works for you and talk about it we're not talking mm. we rather argue and raise conflicts and be at each other but we're not talking to and, each and other. I, i said that's why i said it's ar- ironical because we're texting yes. and we can speak to people thousands and thousands of kilometers away but those that are next to us are not with us anymore no. yeah there's we're a total not. disconnect mm. yeah and social media has very very valuable aspects to it because i find very uh, valuable aspects to it mm. so but it's not to, inherently evil but it's what you do with it yes, or how it, you moderate it i think we got to go back to how we manage it yeah and make it work it's it's quite us. hilarious i was telling someone that hey there's an app that you put on and it grows a tree for as many hours or as much time you stay away from the phone and she says you're using an app to stay away from the phone that in itself is telling <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey. Um so what are the challenges uh, Famza has faced or you face with the work that you do? I think in terms of from a client perspective it is people come to you the first time and second time and recognize that they have challenges and conflicts mm. and continuing to keep in the therapeutic process to bring about change mm, well, and immediately be patient with that it's a process and yeah. immediately when individuals realize that i need to make a change as well preference not to continue mm. the problem has not been resolved and a year later you back mm. it's your commitment to remaining in the therapeutic process to bring about that change that mm. would benefit you and all around you Right. And I, I think uh, I don't know if you agree with this. I think there's a lot of they come with this idea that the therapist is going to do the work and fix them Absolutely. or fix the system, but there's no ownership that it's what I have to do in between therapy or yes. change certain things that brings yeah. about successful uh, you the know. elements of commitment and willing to change mm. are very frightening to many people. because when there is this realization the expectation you correct in saying that everybody comes to you thinking okay the therapist is going to tell us what to do give us all the solutions and be mm. out of here yeah not so it is a process that would yeah it's a journey actually because i mean i i know i'm quite guilty this i'll tell my patients or clients whatever you call i say there's no such thing as a good therapist but there is such a thing as a good client Absolutely. so if you follow through and put all of that into space yes, yeah. you know into play then we're going to have successful therapy So it's you know it's one way of putting onus that come on it's mm. it's us together not just me doing it for you it's not even possible 
I think it has a lot to do with what we were chatting earlier about mindset. Mm. What is your mindset? What is your expectations? What do you want to see happen? And when you sit down with families and you say, what's the goal of this family? Mm. It's, I think it's sometimes overwhelming for individuals and families to see the need to set a goal, to set changes. And if mm. we all and did work it, towards it. And work towards it. Yeah. And it would be just wonderful if you stuck this process out mm. and the therapeutic... To see the advantage of it. Yes. Because I think you know, people must get the therapy sometimes. It's, it's not fun. You're opening up stuff. You're talking about difficult things. Yes. But there's, there's, there's an end goal for it because it's not working as it is. That's thus you here. Yeah. Brushing it under the carpet is often what we'd rather do mm. than address our challenges. But you have to be at that stage in your life. Are you ready to do it? You need to be ready. Mm. And sometimes you need a little bit of a push. And yeah. we're there to do that push. Right. And we only want to strengthen families. That's our vision. Our core business is strengthening mm. families. To connect, to work yeah. on that connection. We don't want to see the breakdown in families. Right. Uh, and it's happening beyond our control. And it's a reality. Mm. I think we're forgetting. You're right. We don't value the family system. And we forget it's the bedrock on which everything else is built. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's like building a house without a solid foundation. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, look, it sounds like you're doing amazing work. Who is your team? How many staff do you have? Which areas? Okay. Fortunately, we are a team of um, 18 qualified trained professional social workers mm -hmm. with one social work supervisor and myself as the director. We're all social workers by profession right. and with a four-year qualification. And we cover throughout Zulu Natal, which includes, we have service points in chats with Inanda and Phoenix and Pine Town and Guamashu and Amlasi and a Durban office. We go as far as Port Chepston. We have okay. social workers in Port Chepston, two social workers. We have social workers in Zululand area, mm -hmm. Nongoma and in Kandla. And we have three in the Ilembe district. So we're operating in four districts. Okay. That is quite wide and vast. But the emphasis is on making sure services are accessible. Mm. So we at service points where clients can reach us. Right. And I think that's very important because people will come yeah. up with excuses or yeah. I can't get to you, but yes. you, you've made it accessible yes, to many areas. Yes, we've made it very areas. accessible to many. Right. So and, and, and do you have, um, I mean, how do we get a hold, how do they get a hold of you? Do you have a toll-free number or any contact details that you would like well, to share? Well, we have the Durban office number. That's Which, the Glenwood one? Yes, the Glenwood okay. so that, one. Is that the main, that's the, that's main, the main branch? Yes, that's literally the head office. Right. And normally they would call on there. Right. And uh, there's a, it's a 31 202 number. Right. And uh, some people prefer to come to Durban office instead of going in the area where they live. Okay. Yeah, and we do have that all the time. Right. So it's up to you. If you say you want to see a Kwamashu social worker, we'll give you the contact details right. for the Kwamashu social worker. If you say you want to only be seen in Durban, we respectfully acknowledge that because the importance is that you want to get help. On that. You want to accept services mm -hmm. to change your current situation. What about support groups? Do you offer support groups? Yes. Right. We do. We have support groups for divorcees, and this has been favorable in Chatsworth. Okay. It has taken off quite well in Chatsworth. We have support groups for parents. We have with, with, with challenging children or just, just for parents? We have, it's twofold, with challenging children and just for parents. Okay. And then we have therapeutic groups for children who are facing challenging home and family circumstances. Oh, that's that's quite yeah. comprehensive. You yeah. cover quite a bit there. Yeah. And in terms of area, so I hear the divorcee one, it, it took off quite well, well in, in Chatsworth. Chatsworth. And the, the groups for parenting, where is that? That's run? throughout so in every area, in every if there's area. a number, you'll yes. be able to put yes. it together. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think, you know, people don't know what they have or what support, That's you know, right. they have in this. And it'd be so great if they could reach out. Yeah. We well, agree with you now. See, we also realize that as much as we've marketed the organization, mm -hmm. it's a continuous. many people don't yes, know. It's a yeah. continuous process. Right. And we will continue to go on that drive. Social workers will give a talk at the local clinic or at the mm. school. And I was just going to say, health professionals also yes. should yes. know about this because yeah. then we can help. We're in every space where we talk about it. our services, and we 
quite a few of our service points are at Department of Social Development offices. Mm. So we're constantly interacting with their clients that, that are waiting for grant application or have a SASA or mm. waiting for uh, BERT documents, even at Home Affairs as part of that program as well. Oh, so good. we're constantly, constantly saying to people, come to us. What about, because I know, look, people don't like waiting in lines. Is there a waiting period to see a social worker? Can they just pitch up at the, the Durban office and are seen straight away? Or how does it work? How do they access you? Every effort is made not to turn an individual away because so are they seen on the same day? Is that what you're saying? The ideal is to be seen on the same day. Mm. But if there are other booked clients for the day, yeah. we would make it as soon as possible. Because okay. we know people travel and costs and the type of clients we're dealing with may not mm. afford to return. And for many people, I'm just feeling anxious right now and I need to talk to somebody now. Mm. So and they the don't get that it's yeah. The effort is made to see the client immediately. We make quite an effort to do that. Mm. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking from personal experience, whether I was in the government hospital or in private, it's difficult to see people on the same day. Oh. But some of them really want that. That's right. Yeah. If a person says to us, I can't come back, we'd make an effort. To try and accommodate yes. them. Yes. And in terms of cost? For people that are not earning, it is, there's a no cost. There's okay. absolutely no cost. For those no that cost. can't afford it, but then you'd can't have to just see it. that they really can't afford it. Look, we, we ask for no cost because we subsidized by the Department of Social Development and okay. part of our agreement with them is to provide services at no cost to the poorest of the poor. Okay. There are individuals that afford it and we accept a donation for those kind of services. Okay. So you quite, yeah. I mean, you trust the process, you trust Absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. And those that can afford it, they, they pay they're what they're comfortable yeah, with. Paying. They pay what they can afford and willing to. We would never turn an individual away because you can't afford it. Mm. No. Not at that's, all. That's actually lovely because yeah. in this you know, you know, day and age, it's hard to find yeah. uh, organizations that work on that ethos. Yes, we have to because of our funding structure. Mm. We are an NGO. That would. And, you know, um, we, we're quite limited on time, but I just wanted to bring this up. I, I hear you, just, you, you, know, you also work a lot with sex education because you know, the school teaches children about sex education. But we know with our religion, it's quite an uncomfortable topic. Um, but now there's this new curriculum coming up and it's created such a hype. You know, every day you go on social media and there's some, there's even groups being formed where leave our children alone. Yes. Uh, how do you teach, do you teach children about sexuality or do you have these conversations? In our life skills program, the emphasis is on the young person in terms of the self, right. self-respect, self-valuing, setting goals for the self. It's a right. great emphasis on you as an individual. Right. And there is a component in terms of choices and decisions you made. Right. But in terms of sexuality, we don't do a special program particularly with it because we want to drive young people to give more attention to their plans and goals and values. Oh, that's great. So, I mean, yes, so it comes it, in. I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But from a different angle. So, you come in on make wise choices. Mm -hmm. It's one yeah. aspect. We don't put yeah. so much of emphasis that it becomes something yeah. it, that we're pushing it's them It's positive towards. values and reinforcement in that regard and a right. focus on you as an individual. Right. I mean, the only reason I brought it up is. Um, I'm sure you heard or see, you've seen all these movements yes. that are, that are yes. scared of yeah. what is the new curriculum, how is it going to affect our children. Yeah. There uh, is great concern in that regard. Right. And they, I know this quite, it's quite controversial at the moment. Because yeah. uh, the content is concerning. We need to see yeah. what exactly they're going to be teaching yes. and exposing the children to. Yes, I think parents would have to get on board to know this. Mm. Yeah. I think we need to probably look at a program where we need to arm parents to deal with this issue more. Right, yeah. so that they're getting the information from us. As we mentioned, it's yeah. best if it comes from us as opposed to somebody else. Because, I mean, our value system as a family would be different That's compared right. to others. Yeah. And uh, look, time has passed by very quickly. I don't think we did justice. FAMSA does a lot of good work. We didn't even cover divorce mediation no, and all the, no, the rest of it. That. We didn't get to that. <laughs> but it, I think you guys do that kind of work. Yes, you do we a do. lot of yes. mediation. Yes. And I think there's a huge calling for that because lots of times I get, who does mediation? Let me know. Mm -hmm. So FAMSA does yeah. mediation. I think if more families came to us, if, uh, more couples came to us before they got married. Would need and divorce mediation. Yeah. We yeah. do pre and we do premarital counseling. We offer a mm. specific program for that. Right. And we do pre and post divorce counseling. Yeah. But before you get to that stage, we often have people come to us already divorced. Right. 
And then they say, I didn't know that, that I could have worked these issues through. Mm. So before making those final decisions, I would really urge come the idea come to us first it might seem that it's that dire but it actually isn't yeah. come to us first let's talk it through let's communicate mm. we need to talk more mm. and sometimes there are times when there is no choice for a divorce mm. we understand that right. but i think if if even before you got married you work through issues don't say it's mm. going to go away because it never goes away. Yeah, it probably gets worse. I think yeah. you have to preempt it and be logical yeah. in how yeah. you deal with if it. If we had more young people come to us for premarital counseling and even pre-divorce counseling, more families could be saved, mm. more relationships could be strengthened. Yeah. And there would be change in it change. I mean, if families are well, it affects whole, communities, yeah. affects and society. And I think even our future effect. generation, because I mean, yes. if there's a divorce in the family, I'm not saying it's completely impossible to, but it affects the child's mindset, ability to trust, ability to love. Well, there's impact. No. There is there's impact. impact. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no denying that there is impact. It's just the levels of impact on different children and different mm. young people and even the adults as well. There is impact. Mm. And how they deal with it also That's has right. a huge impact yes. on. Um, do you have any parting advice that you would want to share with our listeners? I think now more than ever before, I believe that families are being very compromised yeah. and are at risk. And we need to do things differently. We mm -hmm. have to talk more. We have to pray more. We have to find solutions together. Right. And FAMSA is willing to guide that process. We are here. We're available. And we'd like more people to reach out to us and come to us for the kind of help that you need in terms of your in, at individual, family, young person, whatever level, level it is. Yeah, and I think even with marriage, things can get tough. doesn't mean you have to hit the exit. There are yeah. options. There's yeah. always a There's solution. always a choice, yeah. yeah. So as a parting thought, I would like to reflect on how Islam places value on family relations. As we know, the act of maintaining family ties is an obligation in the Islamic faith. This is having good relations with one's relatives, to love, respect, and help them. Islamic Islam views that keeping relations with family members prolongs one's life and increases one's sustenance. It is a hadith power prophet وسلم, that states that a person who breaks off family ties will not enter into Jannah. And we even know divorce, they say, rattles the throne of Allah. Yes. So all of these things are taken so seriously. This being said, we should do whatever it takes to maintain good family relations. Inshallah. Inshallah. So with that, I will bid you farewell. Assalamu alaikum. And remember, be kind, be mindful, and take care of yourself. See you next week from me, your host, Nazir Iram Osman. Thank you.